Hey guys, on occasion I would post up these downhill videos of me taking these awesome epic descents down like some mountain or hill and a lot of, well, some of you guys will actually ask how fast are you going? What's the elevation and all that? And so I was thinking about how do I do that practically in um, real time? So having a camera mounted looking at the iPhone or my GPS at the time and looking at the downhill that's really didn't seem practical enough. Um, it wasn't until I got into uh, electric unicycling I saw this video. Let me show you how to do it. First, you'll need a camera. I'm using my GoPro since I shoot most of my ride videos on it. Next, you'll need a GPS or an app like Strava, which records your ride progress and allows you to export out the GPX file of your ride. Finally, you will need to download and install the Verb Edit software from Garmin, which will put video footage with your GPX files together. There's a Windows and Mac version. I'll be using the Mac version. So you're probably wondering, this is a Garmin software, will this work on my camera? I don't have a Garmin Verb. And the answer is yes. Um, I use a GoPro and any other type of cameras. They work as long as it's a valid uh, video file. With your tools ready, get out there and ride your bike. Don't forget to bring your camera and iPhone with Strava loaded. When you're ready to capture your ride, turn on that camera. Then you start your Strava if you haven't already done so. With your camera on and Strava running, do a circle or two. You do this so that it gives you a point to sync up your footage and your GPX tracking within the Verb Edit software. Then you start your ride. Once you're done with your ride, stop filming and stop Strava. The important part is making sure you save your Strava ride online. Pull out the GPX files from your Strava activity and then click on the little wrench icon here. Then select export GPX to download the GPX file and click on import clips and photos. Make sure you click on import other and select that video. From there, create a new video and then type in the name that you would like. So just throw it in the clip after you're done. And then from there, click on map and then import G metrics. What that does is it allows you to select um, a file from your computer, uh, which is where the GPX file was downloaded from Strava. Import that in and you get a map on the left and video footage in the right. And as you can see, there's um, an overlay of the speedometer and um, elevation profile, along with like maybe the route and some uh, other information that you wanna add to it. So let's explore. You kinda go into G metrics again on this left side, and you'll notice that there are a bunch of different templates. And what these are, are different um, you know, things, gauges that you want to add to your uh, video or change in your videos. Um, they're all pretty much customizable. You can change the color of the gauges. Uh, you can move the gauges around, which is, you know, whatever you want to do. But a lot of what the template has is like what people commonly use for their own. So we'll be moving ours to the left for the time being for illustration purpose and to click on data and from there you put to click on G metric sync and from here you'll have a side-by-side -side 
video on the left and map on the right. As you notice, I've kind of uh, filter out the one on the right for privacy purposes. But essentially, you can go and you can kind of locate where you are in the video versus the map and then click on done. Uh, once that's done, you should be able to kind of review the video. And uh, for uh, for me, I'd like to change the gauge. I kind of like the classic look, so let's go with that. And um, from there, we go on and export the video once we're um, ready for that. But actually, let's just check out the rest of these gauges and what they what they look like. But I do like the classic one. Yeah, a little too much information for the open view. Yeah, I'm not digging that. Okay. There's, yeah, none of this really fits, but of course it's up to you how you want to uh, display your stuff. Or maybe you just want to have, um, you know, none. <laughs> but I guess that defeats the whole purpose of this whole thing. So let's, uh, yeah, let's click back onto classic. That's the one I like. And I'm done from here. Um, and so the next thing is, let's check out some footage. Let me make new circles, of course. And a couple of circles. <laughs> And of course, let's export by clicking on the export button on the right, top right. Select your resolution, select uh, frame rate, quality, high. And of course, branding. I don't want any of the verb stuff, so put none and click on export. And then save your file in whatever folder. It actually creates a new folder wherever you're saving it to. Click OK and wait for it to export the video. So we'll wait and uh, get back. Here we are, it's all done exporting here. So you just click on done and you're all set to go. So once you get everything all set, you export your video out and this is what you get. Cool, huh? I hope you found this useful, and I'm definitely going to be using it on my downhill videos in the future. And if you found this tutorial helpful, uh, make sure you like it at the bottom here, as well as subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. So I do a lot of bike touring related uh, information. And so make sure you look out for that. Uh, until next time, make sure you get out there and discover your ride.